Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Easter Day service. I'm going to begin with the greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The words of our opening prayer. Blessed be the risen Lord. He has broken from the tomb and opens for us the gate to eternal life. Blessed be the risen Lord. He comes to his disciples where two or three gather together. He is there. Blessed be the risen Lord. He comes from the dead with life. He brings us light and joy and hope. Blessed be the risen Lord. Alleluia. Amen. And we continue with our prayers of penitence. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, help us and hear us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, help us and hear us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to listen now to that wonderful hymn, that Easter hymn, Thine Be the Glory, Risen, Conquering Son.
I'm now going to invite John to bring our reading today. Thank you, John. The reading this morning is from John chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw the two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken the Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in an Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascended to my father and to your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said. These things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. During the last year, we've learnt a lot about the importance of touch. The touch we've had to avoid so as not to pass on COVID-19. We've also learnt a lot about social distancing required to save lives and safeguard the NHS. As we've reflected on this as a nation, a poem written by the former children's laureate Michael Rosen has resonated with many. It's a wonderful poem written to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the NHS, and it's entitled, These Are the Hands. And I'd like to read a few of the first lines. These are the hands that touch us first. Feel your head, feel your pulse, and make your bed. And the poem ends with the words, These are the hands that touch us last. It's a poem which has added poignancy, as Michael himself contracted COVID-19. 
and after emerging from eight weeks in intensive care and an induced coma, he was unable to speak. His family, unable to visit, prayed together for his recovery. Some of you may have seen the recent TV documentary about his time in hospital and his journey since. And whilst in hospital, the nursing staff caring for him pinned a copy of his poem, These Are the Hands Above His Head. The importance of touch is also at the heart of our Easter Gospel today. Early on in the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came on her own to the tomb and finds it empty. She runs to tell Peter and the beloved disciple, and they in turn run to the tomb to see it with their own eyes. They stoop to look inside the tomb, are amazed, and rush away. But Mary stayed weeping outside the tomb, and she encountered the risen Christ, at first mistaking him to be the gardener. Instinctively, she wanted to touch him. But he replied, Do not touch me. It becomes a bit of a theme in John's Gospel, the account of the resurrection. The first Easter evening, the disciples were gathered behind locked doors. Jesus showed him his hands and his side. Thomas was absent, so when he heard the risen Christ had appeared to the others, he said that unless he could see and touch the wounds of Christ, he would not believe. The exchange between Jesus and Mary has been the subject of countless paintings by the world's greatest artists, including Titian and Holbein. And such works are often entitled Noli Me Tangere, roughly translated as Do Not Hold Me. Mary heeds this difficult request and goes to share the good news with the disciples and in doing so, she becomes the apostle of the apostles. But no doubt in that moment of Jesus standing back from her and telling her not to touch him, she must have felt deep pain and grief. A pain similar to that experienced by those who have lost loved ones in the last year and who have been unable to touch their nearest and dearest in their last moments here on earth. When we gathered here a couple of weeks ago for the National Day of Reflection, we were mindful of the many lives that have been lost to the pandemic. The story of Holy Week resonates with the events of the last year. It's a story of a city in lockdown. It's a story of people living in fear behind bolted doors. It's the story of tragic death, where the love of God meets the pain of the world. But on this Easter morning we discover that this story is about more than that. Today, we are called to follow Mary's example. We are to us to go and tell, to go and share the good news of our faith with others. Mary didn't keep the good news of the resurrection to herself, and neither can we. Just as Jesus called Mary by her name, he calls each of us. Like her, We too are called to share and proclaim the good news of the resurrection with all those we meet. The final few words in the style of Michael Rosen, dedicated this time to the risen Christ. These are the hands. These are the hands that touched the poor, cured the sick, broke the bread, received the nails and lead us home. For Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. We now come to the words of affirmation of faith. We believe in God, the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we now come to our time of prayer together. So let us pray. Holy and everlasting God, we give you thanks for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. In him, light triumphs over darkness. Life triumphs over death. In him is our hope and the promise of eternal life. We pray for all who preach the gospel, for all who seek to lead others to the risen Lord, for all who teach of his forgiveness, for all who have their hope set on life eternal, that we may all rejoice in the power of the risen Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We look for the coming of peace on earth. Lord, let us hear that voice which says, Peace be with you. Let your peace begin in our hearts and in our homes. Let your peace grow in our communities. Let your peace reach out into the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the risen Lord appeared in the upper room, May he be known to be in our homes and among us. Lord, destroy all that was lock us in or deny us freedom. Enter our lives that we may live for you. We remember all who are lonely, all who are fearful. We bring before you today those who are ill, both at home or in hospital, especially Charlie Hall, Dennis and Joan Kirk, Brian Metcalf. Sam Mottram, Adam Newton, and Terry Reason. And we pray in our hearts for those known to us personally. We look to you in hope, a risen Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of those who weep today, those who are newly separated from loved ones, all who are caught up in sorrow And are heavily hearted. All who are distressed and overwrought. We remember all who mourn the loss of a loved one. Remembering today the families of Walter Deacon and James Fraser. And remember those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Lord, wipe away all tears from their eyes. That they may see you. And know life is eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the collet for today. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And words of praise and thanksgiving. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. We need not fear. His spirit is with us. We are surrounded by love. His spirit is with us. We are immersed in peace. His spirit is with us. We abide in hope. His spirit is with us. Now we share together the words of the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. 
and the words of the blessing. May you find in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord, a companion for your journey, a sure ground for your hopes, the peace that passes understanding, and the joy that is life eternal. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and those whom we love this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.